So if you want to make a fart, a, sm <laughs> a smart fungicide decision in 2025, 20, continuous corn is just generally speaking likely to be more profitable than corn for soybean. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquid Grow. Hi, I'm Jake Vossenkemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquid Grow. Dr. Jake, um, I can tell that you've been in Missouri for the holidays because you're starting to kind of bring that oh, Missourian I accent see, back. I see. But I'd like to talk about corn on corn today. Well, we just recorded that video with John talking about the corn, the soybean corn price ratio and how right now the price ratio is favoring corn from a profitability perspective depending on some on, on some financial situations. But generally speaking, there's a lot of chatter, there's a lot of buzz about, is corn gonna be more profitable in 2025? I think we're pretty fortunate here where we are at in the liquor grow territory because our farmers don't typically switch a lot of acres around like they do in some of the fringe areas. Mm -hmm. So some of these conversations have probably already had or some of these conversations, it's corn on corn is what we've got to work with, right? We've got hogs, we've got cattle, we gotta grow corn. Yep. So if we're going to do a good job of it, how are we going to do that, Jake? Yeah, so I just want to yeah, give some folks a refresher on things to think about when growing continuous corn. Number one, I think most people know this, but you have to apply more nitrogen for continuous corn versus corn rotated with soybeans. And probably the mo more important thing that I wanted to mention is it typically tends to be a little bit more nitrogen than most folks realize, okay? So this morning I was looking uh, at some economic optimum end rate suggestions based on the current course of price of corn and price of nitrogen and it's about 45 more pounds of nitrogen in southeast Iowa if you're going to grow continuous corn than soybeans and it's about 30 more pounds of nitrogen in north central Iowa if you're going to go corn after soybeans. Why so, is it more in the south compared to the north? That's a good question. Um, I think it's because the soils tend to have much higher organic matter in the north so they just have a, a, a better potential to supply nitrogen would be my speculation. I should have just answered that myself. That was yeah. my guess too. Okay. So there's actually some other things to think about, and this is probably going to get a little longer than your five minutes you like, just giving you a heads up. That's okay. fine. We'll pull some shorts out of it. Because I'm fairly passionate about this in general. Okay. The other thing that we know from research, there was a big 30-year um, continuous study done, long-term study done at University of Wisconsin. This study's got some age on it, but it's a really st hard study to do, and I still think it has really good relevance to this conversation. So what they found in that 30-year study was is that there was much less penalty to growing continuous corn in high-yield environments versus low-yield environments. Okay. So if you have an operation and you clearly have some corn fields or some fields that tend to have really good corn yields relative to others, those are the fields where, where you want to position continuous corn because you're not going to have the penalty like you would in some tougher yield environments. And I've also seen some other studies that point to that too. You know, if you think about cars though, Jake, if you've got a really well running car, you can push it a little harder. You're going to get a little more out of it. If you have an old clunker that's, you can't push that thing. It's not only going to go so far. So absolutely, odds are if you've got better environments, you're going to have better output. Absolutely. Yep. So keep that in mind. Another thing I want to talk about is the, the corn yield penalty, continuous corn yield penalty in general. There's a lot of folks that say, oh yeah, I'm not going to grow continuous corn because you know, you're gonna lose a bunch of yield and there's other folks that say, ah, it ain't that bad. So let's kind of clear the air on that a little bit, okay? Sure. <laughs> so uh, this is also coming from a published study and I always try to, you know, base what I say in fact, that's kind of the name of my game. Um, there was a pretty pretty good sized study done in 2013, published in 2013 from the University of Illinois. And what they found, Katie, is that for first year corn, there was about a 10 to 15 bushel yield penalty. Okay, that, that's something. But as you planted more corn continuously, the yield penalty got larger. So after seven years, there was a 30 to 40 bushel per acre yield penalty for growing continuous corn. So what you can use there is if you decide to grow corn, if you're not used to growing corn, there isn't going to be a huge yield penalty for the first year. But if you were to do that for a much longer term period, um, you would expect the yield penalty to get larger over time. Okay. Really, that kind of surprises me a little bit, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, a lot of folks, a lot of folks, you'll you'll hear some farmers say, you know, First year. after a while, um, you know, you you don't have the penalty. But all the research that I've seen, including the paper I just referenced, suggests that the penalty is still there, and it likely actually grows with time. Okay. 
Um, is there a way to kind of minimize some of that or there's some practices you can work on to yeah absolutely you know tillage becomes very important when you're trying to grow continuous corn so you know oftentimes oftentimes after soybean we can have pretty good yields without tillage right but when you start growing continuous corn tillage sizing residue becomes much more important okay and there's a lot we could say about that, but we'll leave it at that just for the time being. We actually okay. just did a video with Phil here in the fall. We can link it down below. Yep, absolutely. The other thing you gotta be thinking about is, you know, historically, the return to a fungicide application is generally much more predictable and larger in continuous corn than it is soybean. And that just simply because you've got you've got you've got overwintering a not foliar disease inoculum okay so so what you're saying is all that leftover residue is a great place for the disease to harbor and lie and yes. so it's naturally there you don't have to worry about it blowing in like on the soybeans yes. so if you want to make a fart a, <laughs> a smart fungicide decision in 2025 continuous corn is just generally speaking likely to be more profitable than corn for soybeans that's usually in our fungicide decision making checklist like yep. are you corn on corn do you absolutely. have heavily manured yep. farms absolutely. is this a hybrid that responds to yep absolutely and then finally uh, again this is reasonably common but if you're not used to growing continuous corn you want to be much more persnickety about your hybrid choice right so you want to actually pay attention to what you're doing and right. choose one that's going to work corn on corn absolutely good stress emergence good disease package um, those, and, would, those would be good decisions. And our agronomy field advisors are trained to help you with all those decisions. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Oh, starter fertilizer is another thing that we tend to see larger and more consistent responses in corn on corn. So I'm not expecting a bunch of people to go out and put starter on their planter just because they're going continuous corn. But just know that generally speaking, we see much more consistent, larger yield increases with starter um, in continuous corn. Well, everybody's kind of watching their costs right now, so maybe if they weren't planning on putting starter on at all, this would be a place where you'd want to maybe keep uh, it. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, anything else on corn and corn? There's a lot we could say, but we'll leave it at that for now. You need to talk about like storage or, you know. Uh, you can talk about more, storage. I'm the, more I'm the, I'm the have, agronomist, the more I'm not the farmer. you need and <laughs> what you're gonna do with all that corn, so. Thanks so much for that today, Jake. Um, you're right, when you're growing corn on corn, there are it is a little bit different strategy and you need to think of it a little differently than just having it on the old soybean stubble stuff. So. Absolutely. Hope you have a great day. Thanks Thank for you. joining. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow.